Hey guys, so this video is a little bit mismashy. It probably may not make a great deal of sense. Um, I've been pretty upset. Um, done some what I believe is some really stupid shit. I feel like I'm in a confessional here, guys. Um, but the whole idea of this whole channel is to be documenting this whole process and trying to help others and help myself while I'm at it. I learn something and have a good time. Now, this video is going to come first and some of it's only going to make sense at the end of the video so watch it through to the end if you can um, so basically what I've got is I'll link up here a video I did on how I tested um, how I tested the fuses and how I and how I worked out that this fuse was good for my um, uh, for my project I'll link that below. Now I did this test and I did what I thought was right testing this fuse and making sure and up until now I've been telling everybody that this fuse wire in my test blew at four amps. Four, four and a half, five, it, it, did, it did vary but I'd say four amps is a fair call for the wire. Now, like a absolute twat, I used do it. I did the test using a 12 volt inverter, which was pulling 12 volts at four amps. Now, again, this will make sense once you watch the video. I have now have. I just blew my fuse in this. It's got a 10 amp fuse, and it blew the fuse. But I've got a still picture of this pulling 23 amps and not blowing the fuse. This is 4.2 volts fully charged. So every test that I've done with this wire has been wrong. Is my entire pack wired wrong um, that's a tough call so I'm gonna run this video through I'm gonna take some comments and suggestions below after the video watch the video first don't comment I don't comment until you get to the finish of the video um, at the end of the day it still did its job it still blew and nothing burnt down and I you know I found the problem before it was actually a problem but moving forward how do I do this better how do I retest I don't know now I do have a spare battery monitor so what I might do is use that to do some more tests with amps and stuff like that because it's a little bit more accurate and certainly that's only 10 amps so I'll let you watch the video I'll let you know up front that I'm disappointed. Um, I don't know. What do I do? I don't know how to proceed. I'm going to have to proceed because I've just um, paid a thousand bucks for a new 48 volt inverter. But I'm rambling on. I'll see you on the other side of the video. Cheers, guys. G'day, tubers. I've just pulled the third pack. Uh, so I can, um, this is the one with all the bus bars along the top and none along the bottom, so I'm about to change that. Got all the, all the spaces cut and drilled. Now, I've just pulled apart this pack. Well, stripped off one side. Pulled off the bus bar. And wouldn't you know it, I, I, I want to reuse these. I don't want to um, kill, um, throw them away. And basically the new way I'm having it is sort of like that and I'm not looking at the screen on the phone so I can still reuse the bus bar I clean it all up a bit more I've resoldered the joints up here so they're much stronger so we're not wasting anything now I've run my multimeter over this and I found that cell there which is that cell there was connected properly but I must have left the plastic coating on the wire 
so therefore it wasn't working so that cell there has been reconnected and I found one with a um, this one here the fuse was broken so it looks like up this end what's happened is is this is lifted up or something I've been too rough with it and um, broken it and it broke this fuse but in reality it was never actually the fuse that well it wasn't this that broke the fuse it was this this cell is stuffed and now looking at it closely you can actually see rust and stuff underneath the actual cell so it appears to me that that fuse actually did its job so it's it's like I'm not even gonna bother showing you it's showing millivolts that showing the cell is completely dead okay so I was just about to upload this video and I thought I might use it as an opportunity to do another little test and to see if I can reproduce this fault. Now, I don't want to actually build this pack out yet. I want to let it sit for 24 hours and I'm going to pull all those. I'm going to pull one. Um, I've got to pull one side off each one of those battery packs to turn it around and put it at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the battery packs rest for 24 hours or maybe a little bit longer. And just so I can do voltage check on each cell and make sure that we're not going to have any problems. Okay, so I've got that hooked up. It's pretty redneck, but look, that's all you need. The fuse hasn't blown yet. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to need a load to actually blow. It's actually warm to touch. I don't know. So what I'll do is now I'll, I'll leave this on. I don't. I don't know what to expect. I don't know whether the fuse is going to blow, or that cell is going to drain the power from all these other cells, and it's going to be substantially low. So I'm going to run this test now. Uh, the theory says it should drain the power or blow the fuse or both. I don't know. Maybe it needs the rest of the pack hooked up to blow the fuse for the extra amps. I don't know. So I can. what I can say is I know that that wasn't like that when I put it into service a month ago. Because, well, let's face it, I'm a little bit anal about my blue cells and I try and... I do, I do put it some effort into trying to make them look good and that would never have passed. Okay, so a few more tests I've done. And apparently you've got to hit record to actually record stuff on this fancy device here. And I left it going for about 10 minutes, um, maybe 15, and the battery pack started to get, well, the cell started to get very, very hot. And all these other cells um, went down by almost a full volt. So moving forward, I hooked the iMax back onto it and charged it back up a bit. So. I would have liked to have had that bit, but it's a little bit hard to reproduce again. So, on with the video. This is what I've got. I've got it charging up. The multimeter's there saying 3.89 volts, 3.88 volts, whatever. And that's just because these batteries are now going flat. They were much higher than this. But this cell here is much hotter. So let's do, let's see if we can get a range on that. So that's up to 50 degrees in some places. Now I don't think this 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 um this meter is overly accurate. I've said that before, but it does give you an indication. So that's can we see that? That's get it on a hot part. I don't think the laser actually points where where the, where the heat is. Oh, there we go. Over 50 degrees. 66 degrees. Depends on what part of the battery I hit. But that that battery there has gone thermal on me. That is heating up. And it is my cut ow. Why do I touch it for? I've done this so many times. The current thinking is now that even though that fuse isn't breaking, it's hot. I will burn my finger in, in... Actually, I wonder if I've got a tissue paper. I know this is ridiculous. We shouldn't be playing with fire, but I want to just... I really want to show how hot this thing is. See how long I can hold my finger there before it burns. It's hard to see. There's actually small burn marks on the tissue paper already. So I reckon if that stayed there long enough, 
and that's really hot that's really 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 hot to touch look it's not catching on fire type hot and it's not burning the fuse up hot but it's certainly burning my fuse my finger hot there we go uh, it's it, it's gonna be impossible to see I understand there is small burn marks on the uh, on the bit of tissue paper there so that that fuse is getting extremely hot and that just must be dumping load wholesale into it I wonder if a test would be if we go amps change that to there change to amp mode I'm gonna have to break this fuse I think just break the fuse Ah, so it just blew a fuse. I don't know if you saw that, but that went up to 22, 22 amps. So that just blew the fuse in my in my um, multimeter because it only goes up to 10 amps. So it's dumping an enormous amount of power into this cell. So you need fuses. You have to do fuses. There's no choice. I am going to be the absolute first person to admit that I was considering just using normal wire. Um, I was this close to it. The, doing the fuse wire really took some extra time and I was really thinking that I can't prove it does anything and screw it, I'll just be done with it and do it a different way and I won't tell any of you. So you know what? I'm freaking glad I didn't. I, really, I truly am glad that I've seen this. I'm truly glad that I could record it. Um, it'd be better if someone else could be here and touch it and go, ow, it's hot. I'm still touching it now. It's been disconnected and it's hot. It's genuinely hot. So guys, use fuses, please. If you think like I thought and said we don't need fuses, you do. You absolutely do. I reckon if that went 22 amps, and that's as, that's twice as what my multimeter can handle, if that actually did do 22 amps draw, imagine what it would do. That's on 12 cells or something. Imagine what that would do if all of the cells were on it. That would be dumping 100 amps, 150 amps more into that one cell, and it would blow the fuse quite quickly. Moving forward, how about I do that as a test? How about I build this pack back up again? So it's pack one. So how about I build this pack back up again? I'll take, I've got to take this cell out and put a new one in. I've got a new cell sitting around here somewhere that I've since lost. And I'll hook this cell in outside of it. I'll do it outside or something. And we'll see if it blows the cell or blows the fuse wire. I might actually use a decent length of fuse wire and I might do it at night time too so we can see the heat. So I think that'll be a very valid test guys. Um, what have I taken away from this? I actually want to go and pull my entire pack apart and test every cell again. But that's not a reality, I've got to keep using it. But I mean how much worse would that be if that cell had been inside and I didn't actually see it on the outside? Now I would have reconnected the fuse and it would have blown again and next time I would have seen it I would have reconnected the fuse again. So I guess it comes down to it is what it is. It is what I'm doing. I'm using secondhand cells. I'm doesn't matter how much you test them. I can guarantee you, I tested the hell out of these cells because they're blue cells and I want them on the outside and you know there's something that I take notice of. I wouldn't have put something in that looked like that from the get-go. So that has failed since I put it in and this one's been built for probably three months now. Okay, so I told you that was going to be a messy video. Um, I've tried to put it together as much as possible and make it make sense. I lost chunks of video and I was I was annoyed then I was happy then ah uh, fucking what, what happens? Shit happens. You know, you got to learn these things. You got to work it out. At the end of the day, um, after I've done this video hours ago, as you can see, it's sort of dark when I turn the lights out. Um, I think moving forward, this, the, the fuse worked. There's no denying it blew, it worked. 
did it blow at four amps like I thought it would? No. Uh, I don't. Moving forward, I don't know how I'm going to test how to make it blow. But it still did its job. It didn't do it as low as I would have liked it. But nothing caught on fire, and I don't know whether. <sighs> Who knows? Really? I mean, you don't know. I mean, unless you're an electronics engineer with about a zillion dollars worth of tools or whatever, you're never going to really know what happened. But at the end of the day, I hope this video in some way or form helps somebody else and we're all going to win. Cheers, YouTube.